In this video we will be stripping down a, a Siegel engine. Um, we bought this from eBay for £35. The engine was completely seized, um, hadn't run for many years. I'm using some heat, some penetrating oil, a little brute force. We'll show you get the engine running again. First of all, for obvious reasons, remove the petrol tank and disconnect the fuel line. This is a Seagull outboard motor which I've just purchased from eBay. And what we've done is we've sprayed plus gas inside. Oh, I don't want to now. And we're gently warming up. We're gently warming up. Totally seized. You've got to take very, a lot of care not to burn the. Well, it's getting a little bit hot. Not to burn the carburetor. After we've warmed the block and we've put plus gas inside, um, we've removed the cylinder head now. Uh, we've tried to to free it up using the flywheel bolt but uh, with no avail. So we've removed the cylinder head. You, you'll have to replace the gasket. So you need a new gasket. So what we've done is we've cut a piece of wood so that it fits inside. And then we're using a, a large hammer. So you need the weight. And we, what, we, what we've done is, as well is we've marked the flywheel on the, um, on the flywheel cover. Firm. As you can see, the piston's moving down now. But we've gone past the inlet. And again, we repeat. We'll clean up the bore. A little bit of ammo cloth. And using the plus gas again. In fact, we'll give it one more wash. Seagull. Get off the, the outboard, we need to clean out all of the ports. The, uh, you'll find a lot of carbon. So use a screwdriver, give them a good clean, great opportunity. This will help your seagull to keep nice and cool in operation. So what are the problems? Cause of overheating. Of course through a build up and trapping the ports. So I'll give this a 
the downward plane. Okay. Using a fine screwdriver, you need to get in and clean out the debris from inside of all of the ports that join each side of the cooling system. You can still feel a little bit. What I've done then is washed it out with a hose pipe, making sure that the piston's fully extended. Uh, it seems pretty clean now. This is going to run a lot cooler. Still some more in there, look. Turn the fuel on. Uh, we've pulled this a lot of times to get it going, uh, probably because there's a lot of plus gas still inside the engine. Um, we've tipped a little bit of fuel down inside the carburetor, uh, so that's a mixture of oil and, oil and, and, and petrol. And then we'll set him on half a climb the climb the um, carburetor until we see. Uh, trickling. So they move the, the water pump exhaust housing to the two uh, slot headed screws. And these are the screws. Uh, this is the remains of the one screw, as you can see the thread is quite a mess. What we had to do, we had to heat the housing up and the, uh, the, the thread housings with a blow lamp. Um, the oil was boiling, so this is how, how hot it was. And then what we used, we used an impact driver. And uh, as you hit the hammer sharply, it frees up the screw while you're heating it and then once we've got it moving we use the impact driver uh, to work it in backwards and forwards backwards and forwards until finally we managed to get the screws out um, this one we ended up sawing the head off uh, we managed to uh, screw the bolt out so that it exposed the thread and sawed through the shank and then later took out the uh, took out the stud with a pair of Stilsons. Um, this is the remains of the impeller, uh, so as you can see, definitely needed changing. And we'll replace the gasket when we reassemble. We're also going to replace the oil seal behind the propeller because heating has probably destroyed the rubber the rubber seal. Before fitting the new water pump gasket. What we need to do is to clear out all the gunge from the exhaust. As you can see there's a terrific amount of muck that builds up. That's very easy to get out with a screwdriver. Again when you've cleaned up, ready for the gasket, you remove all signs of the old gasket. Always good practice. Just get a little bit of tissue on the edge of a screwdriver and take out any grit that's left behind from the emery cloth we've used. WD40 
using a bit of silicon grease. So what we need to do is use this on the surfaces. Always good practice to help, helps with the uh, the sealing. gasket. Always wise to use a new gasket. Very well silicon both sides. to put on the, the impeller. It is, marked, it is marked clearly top so we'll start it off with a bit of silicon grease. Very gently, no force required. Use the socket to start it off. Then There's a rubber seal inside the plug. And now we need a little bit of tubing to drive it down further. Alternatively, we could use a, a pair of pliers and indeed the, uh, the water pump pliers will be even better and uh, again a little bit of a uh, bit of WD-40 goes a long way Uh, fix the uh, the gearbox back on, and we've used um, we've used set pins, Allen key set pins, rather than the uh, the uh, slot headed screwdriver bolts, uh, which were a pain in the arse to get out. And the set pins, and what we've done is we've tightened up and made a good seal. I've already changed the uh, uh, the rubber seal on the gearbox, um, which we found has perished. Well, I'll quickly show you how we change that. So you just squeeze out the, uh, the split pin. Just again, when you put a split pin back in, don't bend the, don't bend the ends round. Just uh, a lot of people make that mistake. Take off the, uh, the spring washer. Take out the spring. Remove the prop. Put it on the tight side. Then you have to take off this phosphor bronze bearing. And we started this off with a screwdriver, and then we levered the screw, levered the bronze bush up. And then we use the, uh, the pliers just to lift it. And the rubber, the rubber seal sits behind there. Easy to change. Uh, anyway, that's that's how we uh, how we did that. And uh, of course, fitting it back together is the reverse. You uh, put the uh, the phosphor bronze bush back in. It has a, a pin through there which you have to drive out. And what we did was we cut the head off a nail and used that as a as a punch to drive out the. Uh, the retaining pin. So you just put 
you prop back on. Oops. Dish to line up with the with the uh, with the split pin. So you choose the side that's dished the most. Line it up with the split pin. And just gently tap in the split pin. Now what we needed to do there. There you go. As I said, don't make the mistake of bending the split pin round. All you need to do is just widen it up. And what we needed to do was to fill up the gear oil, which we did by removing this cap, it was bone dry, and we used the uh, classic EP140. Another problem we've encountered with this particular seagull is that if we open the fuel, it just runs out from the float chamber, so there's obviously a little bit of dirt uh, that's stopping the uh, the float needle from sitting properly so we need to give the carburetor a good clean to remove the carb first of all we remove the fuel line make sure the tap's turned off clean out the filter and blow through the pipe be careful not to blow it in your face just as I did then we need to remove the float valve, the um, sorry, the, the um, carb um, needle valve. But make sure you don't damage that. You don't want to bend that. So just put that safely. Then we undo the the clamp bracket with a little bit of a, a twist. Off comes the carburetor. Right now we have the carb off. Um, this is your choke, very simple mechanism. It just shuts off some of the air. The float chamber simply screws off. There's your float. The correct way to remove the float needle is to unscrew the locking uh, the, there's a locking screw located and it's located in the key there so you unscrew this and then this will tap out through the top of the carburetor and this will release the arm and the pin uh, the uh, the needle place the rope open the vent on the tank Open the fuel feed, tickle the carb till you see a little bit of fuel spit out. Open the throttle up to half. You don't need no choke because it's quite warm. <laughs> 